Hello, good evening, and welcome to St. Mary's, where tonight on WOSN we'll bring you a Western Buckeye League matchup between the visiting Salina Bulldogs and the homestanding St. Mary's Rough Riders. I'm Garrett Seawright. Join alongside Scott Nurse, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from St. Mary's. And Scott, both sides already in the playoffs for the 2022 season. And for some schools, that might be just enough. But tonight, this is a big matchup between these two. Well, it's a great matchup because both these teams are good. And yeah. they're in the playoffs for a reason. And so they bring uh, two good teams tonight. We're going to see a heck of a game. And we could tap dance around it, but Salina doesn't like St. Mary's. And St. Mary's doesn't like Salina. Well, they're close. They're just right down the highway. So... So we've got a great matchup on tap. And, Scott, tonight, what, what are the keys to the game for each side to, to potentially grab a victory? Well, I've got three keys. Number one, line of scrimmage. St. Mary's has a top rushing offense in the WBL. 408 yards a game. They've got 42 touchdowns. Defensive line play for Slina must really play well to keep this St. Mary's offense in check. The trenches is where this game is going to be decided, inside line play. Number two, it's my ball, value it. Both teams are positive in turnovers through nine games. St. Mary's is plus three and Salina plus five. Both teams will need to eat up the clock with the running game, so possessions will be limited. You can't turn it over. You must value every possession, not give your opponent extra possessions. One possession could decide the game. And number three, secondary, defensive backs. Salina has an excellent quarterback and receiver combo. Nick Adams and Adam Faber. St. Mary's defensive secondary must keep those Salina receivers in front of them and not allow Salina receivers to get behind them. They must avoid the big play. For Salina, the secondary has to provide run support to slow down the St. Mary's running attack led by Aiden Henkel. He's got 1,237 yards and 17 touchdowns. It's easier said than done, but we'll see if Salina is able to accomplish that. And when we come back, we'll have first quarter action for you. It's the Battle of Grand Lakes, Salina and St. Mary's, and it's next right here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics as we get set for this Grand Battle of Grand Lake between Salina and St. Mary's. And I uh, want to wish you congratulations to a couple of officials tonight. Uh, two of our officials will be retiring after tonight's, well, this is their final season, I should say. This is their final regular season matchup. A couple guys have been doing it for 40 and 25 years, Scott. Yeah, they are. And uh, it's my understanding they've both got uh, state final games, got, too. Yeah. So kind of a reward going out. Uh, uh, our, our referee tonight is Mark Sisko, and then the rest of the crew is Richard Heil, Bill Krug, Craig Creamer, Thomas Sharp, and Rusty Krug, who is Bill's brother. So Mark Sisko uh, is the official who's been a 40-year official, actually a St. Mary's graduate, and uh, Mark Heil also a St. Mary's graduate. So uh, hopefully we don't have to talk about that at any other point <laughs> in tonight's broadcast. But uh, uh, guys have been doing it for a long time, and we certainly appreciate their dedication and service to to high school sports in the area and in the state of Ohio. And a nice way to end the officiating career with a state championship game. Well, absolutely. And, uh, you know, 40 years is a long time to do anything, let alone come out in the weather that they've endured over the years. Uh, you know, a lot of hats off to uh, officials at, uh, you know, all over Northwest Ohio. That so we'll take a look, a closer look at the Salina Bulldogs here before we get set for kick. Brennan, Brader, Brennan Bader in his sixth season already leading the Bulldogs. They're 6-3, six 6-2. And six and nice bounce back campaign. They were 190 a year ago, played a lot of young guys. But uh, this year things have really gone well for the Bulldogs. And then we you take a look at those vaunted St. Mary's Rough Riders, 7-2. Their losses coming to Wapak and Van Wert in Western Buckeye League play. But uh, another... Nice season for Bo Fry in his second season leading the, the Rough Riders. And both squads, like we mentioned earlier in the pregame, Scott, uh, are headed to the playoffs and, and got to be excited about uh, playing another week next week. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, you mentioned with Salina bounce back year, um, they actually are listed in, uh, you know, the Fantastic 50 in the top yeah. 10 for, um, you know, best bounce back year. They've gone from 1-9 to, as we mentioned, now 6-3. and three. So pretty – pretty big turnaround for them and into the playoffs and uh, you know just a question now whether they'll host or where they'll play in weeks one and two and go from there and when you look at Salina a lot of their uh, guys are going to be coming back next year a lot of their big playmakers uh, um, Z Xander Jones has uh, seven rushing touchdowns on the season the Gavis brothers at the wide receiver position are going to come back so a lot to be excited about for the Salina Bulldogs and they'll kick off to St. Mary's to begin this Western Buckeye League matchup tonight Looks like Zach Gerber's going to tee the football up for the Bulldogs. And we'll get set to go again. The Battle of Grand Lake, we mentioned it earlier, uh, 
pretty heated rivalry between not just the schools, the cities, the communities, the families. Uh, not, not much love lost between the Bulldogs and the Rough Riders as we get set to kick off here in this final, final week of the high school football regular season. Yeah, and I'm excited, Garrett. I think this is going to be a really good football game. Gerber will boot it away on the turf here at St. Mary's. And the Rough Riders bring it out just shy of the 30-yard line, the old rugby scrum style. As Colton Mabry returned the kickoff back to the 29-yard line. So St. Mary's will begin there for their first drive. We mentioned it, 408 yards per contest total, 358 of them coming on the ground. This is a team that's going to ground and pound their way to first down after first down. They'll go power T backfield, double tight ends, and they'll turn around and hand it off to Aiden Hinkle, the leading rusher in the Western Buckeye League, a gain of five there on first down. Yeah, you mentioned leading the, the uh, WBL in rushing, 1,237 yards coming in, averaging 137.4 per game with 17 touchdowns. Also, the Rough Riders starting a new quarterback tonight, Carter Steinberg, in at the quarterback spot as uh, their regular quarterback, Cody Wall, suffered a, a leg injury and uh, is going to be out for the remainder of the season as Hinkle busts one off tackle to the right-hand side. Got out to the about 37, 38-yard line. He's going to be very close to a Pantry Pride first down. Yeah, and that's really what you're going to see from St. Mary's. They lead the WBL in rushing yardage as well, 358 yards per game and 36 touchdowns. So they, they want to control the game. They want to control the clock. They want to keep it on the ground and really pound it between the tackles. So third and one, this is sort of what St. Mary's offense is built for is they'll go a tight wing tee and hand off to Hinkle. His third consecutive carry, he shoved backwards. I don't know that he ever got the first down. It looks like they are going to spot him at the 40-yard line, about a half yard past the first down marker, and he's got it. St. Mary's first pantry pride first down of the evening. Well, he didn't make it by much. A good job by the, the inside uh, three for defensive line for Salina. And Salina giving up 4.1 yards a carry while St. Mary's average is just under seven yards a carry, and we talked about it there in the pregame, but that's going to be a battle that we're going to watch very closely here tonight as Steinberg will go under center and hand off to Mabry. Mabry is gobbled up in the backfield. A nice job there by that Salina D. Mabry with the carry. Does it look like Dalt Chilko in on the stop originally for the Bulldogs? Gaining just one, one there for St. Mary's. So 10 minutes, as we approach 10 minutes to go here in this first quarter, and, and nothing too fancy here, Scott, from St. Mary's th thus far. Uh, a couple of just off-tackle runs and, and just trying to continue to surge forward. Well, they want to, uh, you know, that's their game plan. So they, they want to, especially with a new quarterback, you want to uh, keep it sort of simple. Uh, you want to hand the football off. You don't want to use up any of, uh, of your special plays, if you will, unless you need them. Rough Riders will hand off to Hinkle, straight up the gut, spins off a tackle and gets to the midfield stripe before he's cut down. But a nice carry there by Aiden Hinkle, Braylon Davis on the stop for Salina. But that's another pantry pride first down for the Riders. Yeah, and it's a good thing uh, Braylon Davis was able to make that tackle. Otherwise, he was gone. Nice job by Hinkle spinning off that first contact and picking up an extra about six or seven yards after contact. So Aiden Hinkle already with four carries with, for 21 yards. After that 10 down or 10 yard rush, excuse me. So yeah. first and 10 for the Riders. Nice job by Carter Steinberg with the uh, with the ball handling there on the inside handoff. Colton Mabry will get another carry. He'll bust that one to the outside. Got a gain of about five there to the 44 yard line of Salina. 43 yard line before he's tackled. Yeah, Colton comes into the game with 592 yards and four touchdowns, and he's a load. Man, he's a powerful back, runs low to the ground, tough to bring down. Bulldogs make a defensive substitution on that front line where you know, you're just getting worn down of uh, just guy uh, play after play coming right at you where it, it, it's a, it's a f physical matchup down there in those trenches. Steinberg will hand off to Hinkle off right tackle. Thought he was going to get hit, kind of stutter stepped. He's got the pantry pride first down and a little bit extra, but Aiden Hinkle. Another carry and another pantry pride first down for the Riders. 
Yeah, it looked like uh, number nine, Adam Faber, in on the tackle, 6'1", 160-pound senior, but not after uh, Hinkle picks up enough for the first down. And, you know, Salinas playing a 5-3 defense, so they've got eight-plus in the box, and uh, St. Mary's right now is running right through that. You got a great look at the Wright State University Lake Campus instant replay there where it's taking, you know, a couple of Bulldogs getting into that frame, and you'll see there on your screen that there are a bunch of guys in white lined up Close to the line of scrimmage is Hinkle, another carry for St. Mary's, just surging ahead, still surging ahead to the 30-yard line. A gain of about eight yards there for Aiden Hinkle once again. Yeah, and let's give credit to that offensive line for St. Mary's. you got uh, left tackle Xavier LeClaire, left guard Greg Felver, and uh, you can see the push that they're getting right there. Center's Caleb Miller, right guard's Trent Wyckoff, and right tackle is Braden Saylor. So it'll be second and four here for the Riders as they're approaching four and a half minutes with the football to begin tonight's ball game as Steinberg will trot back out to the huddle. And really, St. Mary's the offense that they run, Scott. You don't lose a whole lot with the backup quarterback. There is Aiden Hinkle. Had to slip past one tackler. He's upended, but a nice carry once again for the senior. And he's got another Pantry Pride first down. Yeah, and again, a big play saver by uh, Braylon Davis. So St. Mary's approaching the Matt's heating and cooling red zone. So just on the outskirts of it at the 24-yard line. Yeah, but you're right, Garrett. Uh, in this offense, that wing tee, you, most of the time your running backs are, are going forward. If nothing else, they're going parallel to the line of scrimmage. So it's usually a positive gain or maybe help to zero. Braden Sullivan gets his first carry of the night for the Rough Riders. And we've seen the Rough Riders a couple of times this season, Scott, where uh, Braden Sullivan really has the ability to, to, to score a touchdown anytime he gets his hands on the football. Yeah, he did. He does. And uh, that was a quick hitter there. A little bit of a miss, miss uh, handle there by the quarterback, but he was able to get it there, no problems. So the ball to 21 yard line. St. Mary's approaching half of the quarter with the football. And the clock continuing to tick as Carter Steinberg will go under center with the straight tee backfield behind him. And they'll hand off to Colton Mabry. He'll try to turn the corner. And a nice job by the Salina defense there as gave us another tackle as they set that edge and made Colton Mabry turn it back up inside. Yeah, and that's what Mabry's really doing, trying to string out the defense, look for a gap here, look for a little seam where you can make a cut. Nothing there. Great job in pursuit by Salina. You can see about five white hats, five or six, right around the tackle there. Yeah, Caleb Davis turns that back inside, and uh, it's a nice job there by that Salina D to bring up third and five against this Rough Rider D. Ten guys in the box. Big play here. For the Bulldogs. They'll turn and pitch to Hinkle. He's got a couple of guys out in front of him, and he's cut down. That's a nice play in the open field by Adam Faber of Salina to bring up fourth and somewhat long for that Rough Rider offense, but a nice play by Faber. You'll see at the Wright State Lake Campus instant replay here where he sheds that block number nine in green and is able to pull Aiden Hinkle down. Yeah, that, that's kind of textbook there, uh, especially from that defensive end spot. So fourth and four. Here for St. Mary's, the offense remains on the field. Yeah, now St. Mary's has a good kicker, but uh, this is kind of that no man's land. This would be about a 35, 38 yard field goal. That's, they need five yards, they've averaged four and a third as Braden Sullivan gets to the outside and Braden Sullivan didn't get there. He stopped. Adam Faber, I believe on the stop for the Bulldogs. Landon Ackley also in for the Bulldogs, we'll take a look at the late campus replay. And they hand off to Braden Sullivan, kind of their speedster. And you get now Landon Ackley, the, so the junior linebacker, able to corral Braden Sullivan. So the Rough Riders take more than half the quarter with the football, come up empty handed, and Salina will get their first crack at it. 13 play drive ends on a turnover on downs there for the Rough Riders. So the Bulldog offense will come to the field as Nick Adams, the senior quarterback, lines up in a shotgun with Xander Jones to his left and a trio of wide receivers, and Jones will get the carry, and Jones is gobbled up by Jay Schaefer of St. Mary's. Yeah, Salina comes in averaging 244 yards a game of total offense. And uh, very well balanced between the run attack and the passing. So Jones a carry a gain of two there on the first offensive play. 
for the Bulldogs. And you're right, Scott, you know, 112 yards rushing, 132 yards throwing for the Bulldogs. Average just 17 points a game, and yet they're here in week 10 with a 6-3 and three record and a spot in the playoffs as they'll go play action pass. Adams, plenty of time to fire. He's got Gabus deep, nearly undercut. Gabus oh. could not corral it. Had the football in his hands for just a moment, and Braylon Gabus lost it as he came to the turf. Well, just a great defensive play by Jacob Kessler, who was back there. It looked like Gabus had that in his hands, good for a catch, huge gain. And you see Kessler come in with his uh, right hand and knock the football away at, uh, just on the catch here, just yeah. left hand. What a great play defensively. Yeah, that's a nice play Knocked. there by Jacob Kessler. He never gave up on that play. So 38 now for the Bulldogs. But, you know, we talked about one of the keys of the game. We can't let those Salina receivers get behind you. Yeah. If, if you do, they're going to make big plays. So they were fortunate on that play, but – uh, they got to keep him in front of him. Adams going to gun Jones in motion. They'll fake the handoff to Jones. He's pressured, has to just get rid of it. Jones makes the catch, tries to stiff arm, is spun out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So they do get a little positive yardage there where it looked for a moment as if Salina was in danger and they'll have to trot out the punt unit. Yeah, great effort, though. I, I, I really like the effort there by uh, Adams in getting rid of the football, giving him a chance to make something positive, and they picked up five yards. So fourth and four for the Bulldogs, and Xander Jones is the punter, the running back for Salina. So Bulldogs conceivably go three and out. Xander Jones averages about 30 yards per punt. Never really got a great handle on that, but is able to get it away. It'll bounce at the 40-yard line before Sullivan will scoop it up. Tries to make one man miss, and that same guy got him. A penalty flag is on the field. As Tucker Ackley. You know, uh, St. Mary's has got two guys that return punts, Braden Sullivan, who we just saw, and Keegan Sharp. And both of them average 19 and 18 yards, about 19 yards per return. They're very dangerous on the return. So Salina really has to do a good job of covering those tonight. We'll see what the penalty flag is from... Mark Cisco says we had a block in the back. So that's a rough penalty there for the Rough Riders. It'll spot the ball at the 29-yard line instead of about the 38-yard line, 39-yard line. So the Rough Riders, who had the football for 7 minutes and 11 seconds the last time they had the football, will try to go back to work. They went 13 plays. Didn't result in any points, but they'll have a pantry pride first down to begin the drive. Steinberg under center. He'll reverse and hand off, and it is gobbled up. Keegan Sharp pushed straight backwards by that Salina defense. Carter Allstander in on the stop. Salina not fooled at all there on that little reverse. No, and Keegan Sharp comes in with 396 yards. He's got four touchdowns, averages about nine yards per carry, but he didn't get anything on that one. So it'll be second and right at 10 yards for the Rough Riders. Salina selling out on the run. They'll turn and pitch to Hinkle. Hinkle with a bevy of blockers out in front of him, makes contact at the 35-yard line and goes down at the 37 as Jack Hassett, third in the Western Buckeye League in tackles. Grabs Hink another one there. Hinkle very effective early. He's already got 48 yards rushing halfway to 100 and uh, averaging about 5.3 yards per carry. Gets a little more on that one. So a seven-yard gain there will bring up third and three here for the Rough Riders as we approach two minutes to play in the first quarter on our Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Steinberg under center once again. will hand off to Hinkle. Hinkle off right tackle is just met in the hole by a whole host of guys in white. Yeah, so I don't know how the stat guys uh, split that tackle up because I think there was about eight guys in on that tackle at least. You can see it looks like the whole Salina defense met at Aiden Hinkle at the uh, line of scrimmage, and he wasn't going anywhere that play. And you see all the guys in white come straight to the football there as Dalton Chilcoat another tackle. And on fourth and one, the Rough Riders look like they'll line up in punt formation. And we'll just we'll wait and see if Jay Schaefer will actually boot it away. It's Colton Mabry, the up back, one of St. Mary's better running backs. Jay Schaefer leads the WBL in punting at 38.5 yards per kick. Schaefer, a very high, short one. Short punt will bounce 
at the Salina side of the field and come back to St. Mary's. A tough punt there for Jay Schaefer. Yeah. And the Bulldogs going to have great starting field position. Yeah, that was about an 11-yard net punt. Uh, it, it, it came off the side of his foot, looked like. Very short, very high. And then it took a, uh, a definitely a Salina bounce. So Salina begins this second possession with great field position. Bulldogs went three and out there last time with the football only had the ball for 11, or 1 minute and 41 seconds here as we're approaching already the closing stages of this first quarter. As Nick Adams will line up in the shotgun once again. Xander Jones to his right with a trio of receivers to the top of your screen. Adams will turn and fire. Caught by Adam Faber, his favorite target. It's a gain of about five yards there for the Bulldogs, four yards there for the Bulldogs. Adam Faber comes in with 439 yards, averages 15.1 per catch. Got five touchdowns on the year. Excellent receiver, his favorite target. And, and Faber has five of Nick, Nick Adams has thrown six touchdown passes this season. Faber's caught five of them. So yep. uh, that's a guy who's done some dangerous things with the football when he's got it in his hands. It's second and seven here for Salina. As Adams will hand off to Zandon, Xander Jones. Gets to the 45-yard line, a gain of about half a yard there, and Bulldogs going to be faced with third and about six here. Yeah, just not a lot there, unfortunately. Xander's following a couple blockers, but uh, St. Mary's filled that gap quickly. Yeah, Caleb Felver, the tackle there for the Rough Riders, a nice play by the middle linebacker for St. Mary's. So third and seven now for St. Mary's. You get a stoppage, and that'll, that'll do it for the first quarter. <laughs> we had a blazing fast first quarter that took 17 minutes of real time here. So we'll step aside and come back with second quarter action here between Salina and St. Mary's on WOSN. It's the replays tonight brought to you by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Salina goes reverse on third and five here, and they'll get it into the hands. Of They've Nathan got a man. Rammel, and he gets it down the field to Faber. Faber at the 20, 10, 5, brought down from behind by Keegan Sharp, but a big play by the Bulldogs has them inside to Matt's heating and cooling red zone. The old double, repa double reverse pass works, Garrett. Adam Faber down the near sideline gets the throw from Nathan Rammel. You'll see a great look at the Wright State Lake Campus instant replay where they run the reverse. He sells the reverse for a long time and then will let it fly. And a big play has the Bulldogs at the Mats heating and cooling red zone at the one yard line. Yeah, and Faber was wide open. Uh, the, the secondary for St. Mary's had committed. They thought uh, the Rammel was going to run the football there and had uh, committed to the run and, and big gain for Salina. So we never got the clock started here for the second quarter. The clock still mm. says zeros on the scoreboard. So I'm not sure what the official uh, call is there, whether we uh, whether we say, hey, that took 10 seconds, or what the call is, but they'll say 17 seconds. So 11.43 now put on the game clock as we're still scoreless here between Salida and St. Mary's. Well, typically if you watch, uh, most officials have one or two of their crew that keeps time on the field. So. Uh, most of the time, they have a pretty good idea of what should be on the clock. Xander Jones, the carry, and Xander Jones has his eighth touchdown run of the season as Salina gets on the scoreboard first after the Donovan's Garage scoreboard. Or Donovan's Garage touchdown, excuse me. Yeah, nothing, I think nothing too fancy here, Scott. They're just You see on the Wright State Lake Campus instant replay, they just hand it right to him and bulldoze ahead. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, th this is a direct result of, of the punt, right, of the short field position that they had. They made a big play with the double reverse pass, and then uh, they were able to punch it in there. So just a nice job of stringing together a couple plays to get themselves on the board early with 6-0 and a chance to make it 7. So Zach Gerber will come on to kick the extra point. The snap is down to hold his up, down and kick his up. And good in Salina has a 7-0 advantage over St. Mary's here in the second quarter on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service that you can count on. Salina has a 7-0 advantage over St. Mary's after the big play on the reverse pass to Adam Faber down to the one-yard line, and then the one-yard Xander Jones touchdown run 
has the Bulldogs on top as St. Mary's leads in time of possession. Nine minutes and 16 seconds to 244 for Salina, and yet the Bulldogs are the ones on the scoreboard, Scott. Yeah, and it, uh, you know that's that's exactly what we expected tonight. We expected St. Mary's to control the clock with the running game. We expected some passing success from Salina, uh, and both have not disappointed through the first quarter plus. So the Bulldogs will boot it away. It'll bounce at the 15-yard line, and St. Mary's kind of just watches it there for a second as Keegan Sharp will finally scoop it up. And Sharp breaks a couple of tackles, gets out to the 25-yard line before he's shoved backwards, and it's forward progress is stopping the play and his whistle dead. And we mentioned that uh, Keegan's um, average on punt returns was 18 plus. He averages about 25 yards per pl plus per kickoff return as well. So a great kick returner. Good job by Salina bottling him up. So St. Mary's will send the offense back out onto the field. And really, uh, Scott, that first drive, you know, they go 13 plays, uh, 50, I think 55 yards, and uh, just got turned over on downs. And then the last play, last drive, three and out there as they'll hand off to Aiden Hinkle. And again, a nice job by that Salina interior defense as the Bulldogs make another stop for a short gain there for Hinkle, a gain of three. Well, we talked that, about that being one of the keys to the game is that inside defensive line play of Salina. And so far, last couple series, uh, they're doing a pretty good job. But again, they're a 5-3 defense. They've got eight, sometimes nine in the box. So that does help in terms of numbers of being able to make that stop defensively. Well, and for St. Mary's, you know, you're, you're already going to run the ball 85% of the time, but now you throw in a backup quarterback that Salina can maybe sell out a little bit more defensively than maybe they had planned to during the week as Hinkle gets the carry and gets very close to a pantry pride first down. It's going to be third and short. Well, you know, sometimes as you get a good look at this replay here, uh, sometimes a backup quarterback can be difficult because you, they're unknown. You don't know yeah. what to expect. But I think uh, in the system that St. Mary's has, uh, probably not much difference in, 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 in what the quarterback will do uh, in this offense. They'll hand off to Hinkle, and Hinkle is met right in the hole. There's a big play by that Salina D once again, shoving him backwards. Caden Merlin, Caden Merlin in on the stop for Salina. It's a loss of one and a half there on this late campus replay. You'll see Hinkle gets the handoff. And he's just shoved it straight backwards. A great play made by Carson Kaiser as well to make the stop. And St. Mary's has to bring the punt unit out once again. So fourth and two. Salina's got to feel pretty good now. Two defensive stops in a row. And they'll send the punt back to Jay Schaefer. A much better punt this time from Schaefer. Caught at the 31-yard line by Gavis, and he'll be spun down at the 35-yard line. So the Bulldogs will set up shop there to begin their third drive of the evening. Yeah, I thought Gavis was just going to fair catch I that. Did, I did and too. He, he went ahead and fielded it and tried to make something of it. He did get about three yards. So with 9.28 to go here in this first half, Solana with the 7-0 advantage. And Nick Adams will bring the offense back out to the field. Xander Jones off center his left. And he'll get the carry. Jones cut down to the backfield by that St. Mary's D. As Caden Sharp comes off the edge to make the stop. And I got to say, Garrett, what a, what a perfect night for football tonight. Absolutely. You know, late October, uh, it, it was, you know, 60-plus degrees today. It's probably about 55 right now. It's a little warm for the players as you get a good look at that replay. Um, probably a little warmer than the players would like, but for all the rest of us, it feels pretty good. Yeah, uh, you'll take you'll take 60 in week 10. Oh well, yeah, especially compared to last week when we had high winds and it was much much colder. Adams will sling it to Faber at the 35 yard line. Tried to reverse field, tries to spin out of a couple of tackles, and that proves to be futile as the St. Mary's D flow into the football and will bring Adam Faber down for a loss of about four yards. Yeah, and there just wasn't much there. I'm not sure what he was trying to do here, if there was some sort of uh, Oh, he, he didn't catch, he just he didn't catch it cleanly. It. Yeah. So that'll bring up third and long here for the for the Bulldogs, excuse me, third and 11. Great job by St. Mary swarming to the football. So, As, as Coach Zerby used to call it back at Spencerville, swarming to the football. 
what you like to see as we right. approach eight minutes to go. Here in his second quarter, Adams, time to throw down, flush from the pocket, has to sling it to the near sideline, nearly caught by Faber. He would have been well short of the first down, however, and it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, it looks to me like he was really just trying to throw that away, maybe give his receiver a chance at it, but really throw it away. He's thrown off his back foot, not much there. We've seen both sides here so far. It's gotten this early going. Get, get nice play defensively. I, I, I know that there are those that would think a 7 nothing game means it's been bad offense. I don't know that it has been as much as it's been really good interior line play. Well, and I think, uh, you know, Salinas had two straight stops, and on the first series they had a bend but uh, didn't quite break mm -hmm. when it got down to about the 20-yard line. So I think defensively, uh, you know, they're doing a pretty, pretty good job. And, and St. Mary's, on the other hand, really – was just the victim of a short field and, uh, you know, a big play by Salina. So Sander Jones on to punt for the Bulldogs as the Rough Riders have a couple of guys back deep to return. It's caught at the 34-yard line by Keegan Sharp. He'll bring it out to the 45 before he's brought down. It's a relatively good starting field position for the Rough Riders. Yeah, about a 15-yard punt return there. And, and, you know, what you see with a lot of punt returners is they'll catch it and sort of dance around, look for the big play. When St. Mary's fields a punt, they, they run it straight ahead. I mean, they come right at you. They look for a seam, but they come straight up the field and get what they can get. And, and I think that's why they're so successful. Both those guys back there average about 19 yards per return. And they're not trying to, you know, make the big play. They're trying to make the right play. And oftentimes that's the one that's straight up ahead. As we'll go straight wing T for the Rough Riders. And they'll hand off to Sharp again. He tries to get to the edge. And he lost the football. And it's pounced on by the Salina Bulldogs. Salina gets the fumble recovery as Braylon Gabus makes the recovery. I'm not sure if Sharp ever really had great control of that football. It bounced high off the turf and right into the hands of Braylon Gabus, and that's a big play for that Salina D. You take a look at the late campus replay. It just got stripped, and Gabus was the only one in the area there to pounce on the football. So Salina has it at the St. Mary's 49. Yeah, and give uh, number 58 Dalton Chilcote a little bit of credit there. It looked to me like he was the one that punched that ball loose. So Adams in the gun. Jones to his right offset. So again, Salina with short field position. And Salina shoved ahead to the 44-yard line as Jamal Kessler gets the tackle for the Rough Riders and actually helped Salina out a bit, shoving him forward maybe a yard or two. You yeah. see there on the right State Lake campus replay where Kessler comes forward and is able to bring Jones to the turf, but Gets him to the 44 yard, 46 yard line, excuse me. So three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen on second and seven. Jones will roll this way. He'll fire. Little oh, high, it's intercepted by Tristan Gardner. Gardner down the near sideline. Gardner's got one guy to beat, and Gardner is tripped oh. up at the 10 yard line by Adams, but a great answer. By the St. Mary's defense, they get a turnover of their own, and they're set up shop inside the Matt's Heating and Cooling Red Zone. Well, if you're a St. Mary's fan, that's a great way to answer the turnover they just had. Looked like uh, Jones just floated it a little bit up there, got a little too much air under it, and I thought this was gone. I thought he had a pick six here. Great touchdown saving tackle by Adams. So Rough Riders will have first and goal inside the Matt's Heating and Cooling Red Zone. With seven minutes to go here in this first half, trailing by seven. Aiden Hinkle already 13 carries here in this first half. We'll see if he'll get 14, 15, and 16 potentially here. Yeah, and he's got 58 yards already too. So the Rough Riders will hand off this one to, I believe, is that Dominic Osborne's first carry of the night? It is. Dominic Osborne, a 5'8", 175-pound sophomore. Gets his first carry of the evening. And it's a gain of about four there. And you see the right State Lake campus instant replay. He had a little bit of a hole there to get down to the five-yard line or so. Yeah, a nice job by him. He uh, comes in with 162 yards, one touchdown, averages about 5.4 carry. He'll give it to Aiden Hinkle, and he'll bulldoze yep. his way into the end zone for his 18th. Donovan's garage touchdown of the season to make it 7-6. 
That's a tough train to stop, Scott. A six foot, 210 pound senior, a low center of gravity, and you see the Wright State Lake Campus instant replay, and it's going to take more than one guy to stop him when you only need four yards. Yeah, that's the WBL's leading rusher. He averages well over four. When you get close to the end zone, you give it to him. And you can see what, you know, very low runner uses those, kept those legs moving, and just, uh, you know, bulldozed his way into the end zone. So Logan Rush on to kick the extra point for the Rough Riders. Looking to tie this game up at seven. And it's through the uprights and good, and we are tied at seven between Salina and St. Mary's. Battle of Grand Lake here on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. St. Mary's begins in the Matt's Heating and Cooling red zone on that last drive. It's a two-play, 10-yard touchdown drive, and the Rough Riders have tied the scoreboard at seven. Yeah, I think both uh, both teams have been the benefactors of a big play. Yeah. Uh, one on offense by Salina, one on defense by St. Mary's, and we're all knotted up. So the Rough Riders have the football teed up as Jay Schaefer tries to get it to stay on the tee this time. So St. Mary's turned the football over on the first play of their last drive. Instead got a turnover again on the second play. And the ball caught by Gabus inside his own one yard line and he'll try to bring it to the St. Mary's sideline. Gabus out of the open field. Tries to split a pair of defenders. Gets to the 32 yard line. A nice return there by Braylon Gabus to give Salina a pretty good starting field position, all things considered. Yeah, really nice return there. I mean, that's excellent. You know, a lot of times when you see something like this, a player bobble the football or maybe, uh, you know, trying to stay out of the end zone like he was, the defense relaxes a bit. Gabus takes advantage, brings it out to the 32 yard line. And really, Scott, when you take a look at it, Salinas defense has spent a lot of time on the field here in this first half. St. Mary's had the football for 12 minutes of the, you know, 17 minutes we've played. Uh, how important is it for Salina to put, string together a couple pantry prime first downs here and just give their defense a bit of a rest? Yeah, they need to, no question about it. Adams gobbled not, up. Not much there, but you know, the thing about it is for most of these teams uh, in, in the WBL and Northwest Ohio, uh, most of the guys, I, I would say probably 75% of the guys play both ways. So, uh, you know, the offense is the defense, defense is the mm -hmm. offense for the most part. you got a couple other guys that are mix and match, but, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't see that as being a major factor. Braxton King and Jay Schaefer on the staff on the last play for the Rough Riders. Second and 10 for Salina. Adams dumps it out to oh. the back out of the backfield, and it's dropped. Well, that was almost picked again. Had clear sailing for another six points. If uh, the St. Mary's defender could have held on to the football out there, I'm not sure exactly. I think it was Jamal Kessler. I thought so too, but I wasn't sure. We'll get a look at it here. Goes right through the receiver's hands. Yep, number 37, yeah. Jamal Kessler, or Jacob Kessler, excuse me, Jacob Kessler. Uh, nearly got another interception there for the Rough Riders, and it'll bring up third and 10 here with 5.37 to go in the second quarter. It's Adams. Pump thinks it's a screen. He'll get it to Jones. Jones is going to be gobbled up from behind, though. Caden Sharpin on the stop for St. Mary's. Rough Rider defensive line might have bitten on the screen, but you take a look at the Wright State Lake Campus replay. See those guys rush up field, but the linebackers right there is Caden Sharp. Fifth of the Western Buckeye League in tackles. Makes a big one there for St. Mary's. Yeah, he does. Um, he, he, you're absolutely right. He just read that really well, and that's probably the result of coaching and, uh, you know, preparation by the coaching staff at St. Mary's. So Jones back on to punt once again for the Bulldogs. Sharp and Sullivan back deep to return. A nice boot there by Jones. Oh, the it's ball bobbled. is dropped. It's a race it's to loose. the football, and it's grabbed by Keegan Sharp. Right at his own 30-yard line. Got everybody's hearts racing here at St. Mary's. Well, we talked about one of the keys tonight was take care of the football. My ball and value those possessions. You see the ball just kind of flies right yeah. through his hands. 
and uh, St. Mary's very fortunate to uh, be able to jump on that football. It was close. So first and 10 for the Rough Riders once again at their own 30-yard line. 4.43 to go in this first half. Carter Steinberg with Hinkle, the lone back behind him. They'll send a man in motion and hand off to Hinkle. Hinkle rumbling out near the midfield stripe is brought down by Faber. But it is a big carry there by Aiden Hinkle. The first real long one of the night there for the Rough Riders. Yeah, and you're right. When you talk about rumbling, he's just, uh, you know, he's not going to be taken down by the first guy. That brings him up to uh, 83 yards on the night. That matches his longest run on the night. He's got two 10-yard runs. Hinkle, another carry across the midfield stripe out to the 45-yard line. So he'll approach the century mark here in this first half. You know, he's kind of like a sledgehammer and a nail. You know, you, you, you may not drive it all the way in on your first swing, but it's it just over time he's eventually going to, you know, he's going to get his yards, and he just keeps pounding and grinding and, and coming at you, and sooner or later he's, he's successful. Hinkle, another carry. That one, though, read great by that Salina D. As several Bulldogs there on the stop. Dalton Shieldcoat initially on the stop. Tucker Ackley also in for Salina. Yeah, and St. Mary's has got some size across that front line. I was just looking. Xavier LeClaire is 370. Yeah. Greg Felvers 225. Caleb Miller's 260. Whitecuff's a little pulling pulling guard at 165 and then uh, Sailors 305. So that's that's a big offensive line for a uh, you know Northwest Ohio football team. Rough Riders needed one, got about two and a half for a pantry pride first down, but it'll move the chains, sustain the drive with 315 to go here in this first half. And really at some point you, you start to wonder is this may be the, the last time either squad's gonna have the ball in this first half as long as St. Mary's has held it a couple of different times. Got a uh, false start here, maybe, or was there a timeout? There was a timeout called by the rough or by the Bulldogs, excuse me, before the false start penalty. So with 3.02 to go here in the second quarter, we're tied at seven here on WOSN. Touchdown tonight brought to you by Donovan's Garage in St. Mary's. They can handle any size might. job from oil changes, simple auto repairs, brakes, and tires. Give them a call at 419 394 80-85 as the Rough Riders look to put another Donovan's Garage touchdown on the board here to end this first half with three, just over three minutes to go in the first half, and we're tied at seven here on WOS. Adam Garrett Seawright joined alongside Scott Nurse, bringing you all the action here in this regular season finale. And the Rough Riders will hand off. Keegan Sharp able to slip a tackle, or Braden Sullivan, excuse me, slips a tackle. He gets down very close to the Mets heating and cooling red zone. A big run there by Brayton Sullivan. His previous long was three yards. Gain of about 13 there for the Rough Riders. Yeah, Brayden Sullivan's got 23 yards on the night. Average is 7.7 .7 tonight. And just a nice run, nice, nice job of, of vision. Seeing the hole, exploding into it, picking up a positive game. You saw there on that late campus replay, able to slip past a tackler as Hinkle will go right up the middle, and he's still on his feet, driving those legs further inside the Matt's heating, cooling red zone down to the 15-yard line. Yeah, the secret to that play, if we see on the replay here, is that the offensive line for St. Mary's really got off quick. They got out of their stance and into their blocks quicker than Salina did. And uh, Hinkle picked up about six yards before they really, Salina defense was able to react. So second and five, Steinberg to Hinkle. He's met in the hole and then stood straight up. Salina able to hold tight defensively there. As the clock continues to tick, 2.15 to go here in this second quarter. It's a gain of just one. It'll bring up third and two here for the Riders. And St. Mary's is running so many plays between the tackles. Look for them to, to, to maybe look at a quick pitch or something to get to the outside, use some space. Steinberg, Hinkle right up the middle of the field. You get the pantry pride first down, he did. He needed to get to the 10-yard line, got to the nine. And that'll move the chains for St. Mary's. Yeah, a little inside handoff. They, they, 
They fake the counter to uh, hopefully draw a linebacker and leave that hole open. They're successful. First down. So first and goal here for St. Mary's. Colton Mabry's first carry in a long time. Turn, tries to turn the corner, tries to get to the pylon. He's just shy of the end zone, but it's going to be second and goal from the one-yard line here for St. Mary's in the final stages of this first half. Yeah, and that's what I, I, I mentioned a play or two ago. I thought if they get outside, get into some space, they might have a little bit of success and, and help stretch that Salina defense. That's exactly what they did. Picked up about eight and a half yards there on the one-yard line there with the first down, with the second down, sorry. So as we approach one minute to go here in this first half, it'll be second and goal from the one-yard line. Aiden Hinkle already one touchdown carry on the evening for the Rough Riders as it looks like they're going to call a timeout here as the play clock winds down to zero. So under a minute to go here in this first half. We're tied at seven. More first half action when we return on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Minster Bank, supporting the youth in our community. Tied at seven here in the closing stages of this first half between St. Mary's and Salina, the Battle of Grand Lake. Both squads going to be playing again next week in the playoffs. It's just a matter of whether it'll be at home or not. St. Mary's, excuse me, uh, will be. If they win, they're going to be either a 6, 7, 8, or 9. If they lose, they're a 7, 8, or 9. So not a whole lot of variance there for the, for the Rough Riders, no matter what happens here tonight. So second and goal here for St. Mary's. Ball to one-yard line with under a minute to go here in this first half. And I think good timeout by Bo Fry in his second year there to milk the clock all the way down, then take the timeout. Aiden Hinkle, an easy second touchdown run of the night. And that Donovan Scaraz touchdown puts St. Mary's ahead 13 to 7. Nothing fancy there, Scott. You turn it around and give it to your guy for the 22nd time on the evening. And Aiden Hinkle gets another touchdown. Well, I feel like most of this drive was on Hinkle's back to begin with. I mean, he had a lot of big plays in this drive, kept it alive, converted several third downs in, into first downs. And so. Uh, uh, nice job in getting the reward to be able to go into the end zone. So Logan Rush will come on for the extra point once again for the Rough Riders. Aiden Hinkle, 22 carries, 106 yards, and two touchdowns already here tonight. Last year, St. Mary's outrushed Salina 291 to 6. And right now, they're outrushing the Bulldogs 150 to 8 as the Extra point goes through the uprights to give St. Mary's a 14 to seven lead. 54 seconds remain in the second quarter. You're on WOSN. Touchdowns tonight brought to you by Donovan's Garage in St. Mary's. They can handle any side job from, any size job, excuse me, from oil changes, simple auto repairs, brakes, tires. Give them a call, 419-394-8085. As the Rough Riders get a pair of back-to-back Donovan's Garage touchdowns after they trailed 7-0, 14 unanswered by the boys in blue. Have them on top. Salina with not a, not a lot of time, but we saw them score their first touchdown very quickly in two plays. Jay Schaefer, the kickoff and the play immediately whistled dead. Yeah, I think there was an offsides on St. Mary's. Uh, it looked like there was a little bit of a stutter step by the kicker, and uh, maybe a few of the St. Mary's guys started a little early. <coughs> so we'll bring everything back and move the Rough Riders back five yards. And really, Salinas had a couple of pretty nice returns here tonight on kickoff return, Scott, where uh, you know, five yards could be a, a, a decent-sized chunk here for St. Mary's to go backwards. Yeah, absolutely. With the last time uh, they were able to return it to the 32-yard line, let's see if they can get it out a little better with only uh, 54 seconds left in the quarter. So Jay Schaefer will tee it up once again. We'll try it again. Kind of a sidewinder there. You know, be a touchback. St. Mary's faithful believed Salina touched it, but nonetheless, it'll be spotted at the 20-yard line. 
Yeah, that would have been tough to handle. I had a little steam coming off the turf there. You know, ball bounce is a little tougher off those rubber pellets to begin with, but a little bit tough to handle there. So Salina trying to put something together here with 53 seconds to go here in this first half. Well, I'm looking at the flag. It's it's hanging pretty limp. Not much, uh, not much wind, not much uh, resistance here if they decide to try a couple deep balls. Adams in a gun. We'll hand off to Xander Jones. Jones, a little running room out to the 30-yard line. Going to be very close to Salina's second pantry pride first down of the night. And he is. Looks like they're going to move the chain. So a 10-yard carry there by Xander Jones. They had eight yards on the ground total before that play. Yeah, and what you'll see a lot of times by coaches is they'll run some sort of a running play like this, see if they get a little success, and then if they do have some success, they might take a shot downfield. But they really want to be safe, not make a mistake that would uh, put another score on the board for St. Mary's at this point. So first and 10 for the Bulldogs at the 30-yard line. Jones joining Adams in the backfield with 23 seconds and counting now on the scoreboard. They'll hand off to Jones once again. He's got a convoy of blockers out there in front of him. Jones tries to turn the corner. He's got another Pantry Pride first down. 12 seconds remain in the half. Salina still two timeouts. Well, I think Coach uh, Brendan Bader is uh, is being a little conservative here. I mean, he wants to be see what he can get but uh, not a lot of risk there in terms of turnover. Well, that'll do it for the I first like. half of play. So line is going to watch the, the clock tick to zeros. So St. Mary's will take a 14-7 lead into the halftime break. We'll step aside, come back with third quarter action in the Battle of Grand Lake between Salina and St. Mary's here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics and the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard reads 14-7. St. Mary's with the advantage over Salina. The Bulldogs, however, get the football to begin the second half. And Scott, when you take a look at some of the halftime stats, St. Mary's with a 150 to 82 yard, 83 yard, excuse me, total yards where Rough Riders didn't throw the football in the first half. All 150 of their yards come on the ground while um, Salina, 44 of their 83 yards came on that reverse pass. So almost half of their offense comes on one play. Meanwhile, St. Mary's gets all their yards uh, in one category. Yeah, and pretty indi in a good indicator too when you look at the total first downs, right? It's 9-3 to three right now. St. Mary's has nine, which shows that they sustained the football, mm -hmm. sustained drives, moved it down the field methodically, whereas Salina only has three first downs, and, and one of those came on a big, huge yeah. play they had uh, that led to the score. So, um, you know, they, they have an opportunity now to get the ball first and uh, see if they can respond. And really, what was the message for either side there at the halftime break? Where I think, for the most part, both sides played pretty well. Yeah, I think uh, you know the, the key. The key difference here is is you got to hold on to the football. We, mm -hmm. You can't have turnovers. We've seen an interception set up a touchdown. We've seen a, a special teams play set up a touchdown, and, and really, you got to just take care of the football, value it, and uh, you know do what you're supposed to do. And I think uh, I think you have success. Jay Schaefer boots that kickoff into the end zone, so the Bulldogs will start at their own 20-yard line for their first drive here in the second half, trailing 14-7. to And we mentioned the 83 yards of total offense for Salina, and really um, Xander Jones has 31 rushing yards, where I think 20 of those 31 came on the last two plays of the, of the first half. St. Mary's has done a nice job of kind of limiting Xander Jones's work there in the rushing attack as Adams will come out on the shotgun by his lonesome with three to his left and two to his right, and he'll turn and fire, and it's caught by Jones into the open field out to the 20, or 24-yard line, excuse me. Get a great yeah. look at the Wright State University Lake Campus instant replay there, an easy pitch and catch there for Jones. Yeah, and I like that. It's a good high percentage pass, very safe, almost like an extended running play there. Second and six now for the Bulldogs is Nick Adams, the senior quarterback. By his lonesome again in the shotgun. Same formation for the Bulldogs. Adams looking to throw. Instead, we'll just run it straight up the middle of the field. A gain of about three there for the senior quarterback. It'll bring up third and pretty relatively short there for Salina. Yeah, and Adams does a nice job here of when he decides to run the football. He's got both hands on the football, protects it. 
able to, uh, you know, make sure that there's no turnover there. And it really looked like it was almost taught to him that, hey, when you get to the top of your drop and if nobody's open, you're going to start going straight up field and you, you just got to run it. Don't right. think about it too much. Don't try to make something happen. You're looking for a, a four-yard gain there. If it's not there, take what you can get. Third and three, they'll do the same thing as the St. Mary's defense comes on a blitz, but it's going to be a pantry pride first down for the Salina Bulldogs on the pitch and catch to Landon Ackley, his first reception of the evening. And you get a great look at it on the Wright State University Lake Campus replay where it's just, a, again, at the top of his drop, he gets it to Ackley, and it's a pantry pride first down. Yeah, Ackley was the inside receiver, just a little mini slant there. He didn't really go hard. He just kind of stepped into the open area, and uh, they connected for a first down. Jones will join Adams in the backfield for the first time in this first drive of the second half. It's Adams, the slant. Caught, tried to get out of the grasp of the St. Mary's defender. Did Nathan Ramble, who threw the 44-yard pass on the reverse. He's brought down by Caden Sharp. Yeah, and this was, uh, this was a true slant here from the outside position in. Uh, Well-thrown football. Enough for the first down. Again, two first downs coming out of the gate. Looks pretty good for Salina. Yeah, when Salina had three there in that first half, so two to start this drive here in the second half. Two backs in the backfield now. Adams back to throw, tries to slant again on the slant. It's caught once again by Ramble, and he'll spin his way down to the 40-yard line before a tackle made there by Jamal Kessler of St. Mary's. But Salina putting together a nice opening drive here in the second half, Scott. Yeah, well, it's interesting. You know, Jim Tressel the one time was quoted, uh, they ran the same play like four times in a row, and he, they said, why would you do that? And he said, well, when they stop that, then we'll, we'll, we'll look at running a different play. And Salina has run essentially the same play now three times in a row. Same result, first down. Adams in the shotgun by his lonesome once again on first and 10 after another pantry pride first down. He'll look to throw this time to the right, and it's nearly intercepted by Tristan Gardner. Would have been his second of the evening. Yeah, he's dangerous back there. We talked about the defensive secondary for St. Mary's. They're excellent, um, and, and he almost had another pick there. Well, we talked about it in the pregame, Scott, where you know St. Mary's had to keep those wide receivers in front of them, and, and they have here on this drive, but Salinas just done a nice job getting those guys open and, and getting them the football pretty quickly here. They haven't you know, taken a five-step drop or tried to throw it deep. It's been five to eight-yard routes. Well, and if you look at St. Mary's secondary, they're playing about 10 yards off the football, off the receivers, so those short passes, like you see right there, are available. Adam Faber right at the first down marker. He grabs it, and it's going to be another pantry pride first down. Salina, two first downs, or three first downs, excuse me, in the first half. Three first downs on this drive, as you'll see the Wright State University Lake Campus instant replay. Faber just finds that spot in that defensive backfield, grabs it, and goes down with a 30. Well, and I think that's a good adjustment by Coach Brennan Bader. Um, you know, he, he's seeing St. Mary's defensive secondary about 10 or 12 yards off the football, so he's just bringing inside routes and allowing uh, Nick Adams to be able to hit him. Adams back to throw once again, has time. He'll look to the end zone, a miscommunication there. Nobody home as Adam Faber was the intended target. Tristan Gardner on the coverage for St. Mary's. I don't know if that was a double move that Faber didn't go for the double move, but we'll see on the replay here where Adams had some time in the pocket, hung in there for a while, took a shot from Jay Schaefer, but went deep and there was nobody there. Yeah, it looked to me like Gardner had great position on that, exactly where he's supposed to be. And, um, you know, if you're going to miss, you always want to miss deep and to the outside because typically the uh, defensive secondary is going to be on the inside and, and on the inside of the receiver, short of the receiver. So second and ten once again for the Bulldogs. Adam by his lonesome a bunch formation to the top of your screen. He's immediately pressured and it's nearly intercepted by Gardner once again. The intended target, Xander Jones, a little high for him and almost a second pick of the evening for Gardner. Yeah, they're playing with fire over there with Gardner now. Uh, he's had two that have kind of just fallen through his hands. He could have had picked. He already has one pick return. And if, if really Xander Jones doesn't get his hands on that ball, Tristan Gardner had his hands above his head ready to intercept it, and that's why he didn't catch it because he had to drop his hands down to almost field it like a, you know, a middle infielder in baseball. Right. Uh, otherwise, if Jones doesn't get his fingers on that, that's going back the other way. So a big play here for both sides. Third and ten as Nick Adams is in the shotgun. Bunch formations to each side. Adams, St. Mary's comes on a blitz. He's pressured. He's trying to get away from Jay Schaefer. Does, will turn and fire, and it's caught by Braylon Gabus. He's got the pantry pride. First down and more. He's Davis go is in. into the end zone. 
a 29-yard touchdown for the Salina Bulldogs as Nick Adams pressured, throws back to where you're not supposed to throw the football, and it results in a 29-yard touchdown for the Bulldogs. Well, and I thought they were in trouble from the start. You see all the Salina offense was inside the hashes, and St. Mary's brought it. Adams does a great job of escaping, and then Gabus does a good job coming back to the football, helping his quarterback out. But then, and then once he gets it, he breaks a tackle and he's gone. That's nice downfield blocking as well for Adam Faber that results in that Donovan's garage touchdown. What a spectacular play by that Salina offense from 29 yards out. We got a false start here, I believe, though, on the Bulldogs. It will make the extra point, at least for the moment, a little more difficult. Yeah, and all of a sudden now you look at the stat sheet and Salina has eight first downs. Uh, making progress pretty quickly here to, to, to match up to what St. Mary's had. That's a great play, though, by Nick Adams, who was pressured, immediately felt the pressure, and was able to roll out. And, you know, they tell you not to throw back to the middle of the field when you're on the roll. He said, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to sling it. And uh, Braylon well, Gabus gets that catch and squirts through a pair of tacklers and into the end zone. Yeah, and I'd say an equally great play by Gabus for coming back to the football. Yeah. So the kick is up, and the kick is good. We're tied at 14 with 8.26 to go in the third quarter. We've got a break in the action and a break on WOSF. Touchdowns tonight brought to you by Donovan's Garage in St. Mary's. They can handle any size job from oil changes, simple auto repairs, brakes, and tires. Give them a call, 419-394-8085. So Salina gets a Donovan's Garage touchdown there, Scott. We're tied at 14. Yeah, you know, the last time you and I were here was a, a, we against, a barn burner. We had a barn burner. We, it was against Wapakoneta, St. Mary's and Wapakoneta, which went into overtime and was a thrilling game. And, and, and it looks like this game is shaping up to be a pretty good game, too. That would be all right. As Zach Gerber's got the football teed up for the Bulldogs, ready to send it away. St. Mary's awaiting their first crack at it here in the second half. Kick corralled by Keegan Sharp at his own 10-yard line. He's got a convoy of blockers in front of him, but he's brought down just past the 20-yard line there. That's a big stop by Parker Bertke of Salina to cut down the Rough Riders, and they'll have to go quite a bit here to get another Donovan's Garage touchdown. Well, again, we got a little bit of a mishandle on a kick football there. We, we saw one yeah. earlier in the first half by St. Mary's on a punt, and now we see one on a kickoff return, and, and – uh, you know, that little bit of a bobble, that little bit of a hesitation allows the Salina defense to close on him, and he only gets out to about the 22-yard line. So St. Mary's goes straight T backfield. Aiden Hinkle, 106 yards in the first half. He can add about five yards to his tally there on his first carry of the second half. Had both of St. Mary's touchdowns in the first half. Yeah, and that's a, a good way to answer that score. Come back out with your power game. And Aiden Hinkle, that's a pretty good uh, response. So second and five for the Riders. As they'll hand off. That one going to Braden Sullivan. He'll be brought down just shy of the 30-yard line. A gain of one. Brings up third and four for the boys in blue. You get a great look there at that offensive line and defensive line play as Salina able to stop Sullivan there for just that one-yard gain. Yeah, that's his fifth carry tonight. He's got 25 yards. He's averaging five yards a carry, though. Not bad. They'll hand off to Hinkle. Needing the yards. Tried to get outside. Couldn't get there. Big stop by Landon Ackley from his outside linebacker spot. That's a great open field tackle made by the Bulldogs. Yeah, one of the rare times you see Hinkle kind of pop it to the outside. And Landon Ackley, as you mentioned, Johnny on the spot's able to get that shoestring tackle. It's forcing St. Mary's to punt. Fourth and four, Jay Schaefer. Had the one high short punt in the first half and then had a much better one on his second attempt. So he'll send that one away. Another high over, end over end kick. Bounces the 40 yard line, takes the Salina bounce to the 34 yard line before the Rough Riders can put a paw on it. So Salina riding the momentum train here for just a moment, Scott. Yeah, they are. They, uh, they've come out in the second half. They scored right away, and, and uh, they get a fortuitous bounce there on the punt. And a pretty good field position to start their second drive. 
at about the 47-yard line. And really, that's, that first drive of the second half went about as well as it could for Salina. Um, they have, oh, they have 128 yards through the air now, where, you know, before <laughs> in the, the first half, in the total yard category, they had 83, so they're up to 163 now. So they've got 80 yards here in this second half already as Nick Adams is in the gun by himself. He'll sling it to the outside. It's caught by Rammel, and Nathan Rammel gets a gain of about three on first and ten. Yeah, and I like that play. It serves a lot of purpose. Number one, it gets your athlete out there with the football in space. It also serves to sort of extend that uh, – St. Mary's defense. It causes them, you know, sometimes they get a little bunched and they start to begin to, um, you know, bunch towards the middle and that spreads that defense back out, allows for holes. Same play to the near side as Faber makes the catch. He'll go down just shy of the 45 yard line. He'll bring up third and about two for the Bulldogs. So another high percentage throw that will gain a couple of yards and put them in pretty good position here on third and short. Yeah, and again, uh, the St. Mary's defensive secondary are playing about 10 or 12 yards off the football at the snap. And that's allowing those short passes to be very successful. So third and three here for the Bulldogs. They've gone five wide quite a lot here in the early stages of this second half. It's five and a half to go here in the third quarter. I'm not sure they've had a run play this quarter except for when uh, quarterback Nick Adams yeah. pulled it down and ran on a, on a design pass play. Adams in the gun on third and three. They'll hand off to Xander Jones. He's got the pantry pride first down, but he, he fumbled the, the football. football. And the St. Mary's Rough Riders pounce on it. That's a big play for that St. Mary's D. Jones had the first down, got it stripped, and somebody wearing a blue jersey pounced on it. Well, I was just talking about they had the defense spread out. A great opportunity for Xander Jones. Picks up about 10 yards and then just gets the ball punched out. We can't, I can't see the yeah, number was, there. but I'm not uh, sure if that was Braxton King, maybe the big fella, the 270-pound senior, I believe, might have been the guy to fall on it for the Rough Riders. Yeah, that's a big turnover. Good field position now for St. Mary's to start. They'll hand off to Colton Mabry this time. Or, no, excuse me. That's Dominic Osborne. Osborne's second carry of the evening. No, it was Mabry. I'm second-guessing myself up here. And yeah, not much there, but you see no, Caden it was Merlin. <laughs> it was Osborne. Caden Merlin and uh, Jack Hassan yeah. in on the tackle there. Jack has 88 tackles, third in the WBL coming into tonight. Second and one. I'll hand off to Hinkle. Hinkle to the 41. Gain of maybe two. Yeah, Hinkle's really used well in this offense. You see him there on a straight dive play. That was just a quick hitter dive straight up the middle to get enough for the first down. We've seen him run it to the outside. We've seen some inside counters. We've seen, uh, you know, some toss sweeps with him running the football. So really good job of mixing it up. Rough Riders have yet to throw the football. It's Carter Steinberg, the backup quarterback, will hand off to Colton Mabry, off right tackle. Has to get to the 48-yard line, got to the 45 and a half. So it's going to be fourth in decision time here, Scott. You're kind of in... No man's land, but they, it looks like they're going to send the punt unit out. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, in a tied game, three or four yards, if it was one yard or less, you might go for it. But I think, uh, you know, you got about three yards there. You, you, you don't want to risk giving Salina a field position. It's fourth and as long as a two-yard to go can be. It's fourth and two and three quarters. <laughs> it's Jay Schaefer will be back deep to punt for the Rough Riders. And he'll send it away once again. High kick. Bounces out of bounds at the 31, maybe the 32-yard line. They'll say right at the 30-yard line. So the Bulldogs, who have their average starting field position has been at the 35, will start at the 30 this time. After going, after having the turnover on the last drive, but St. Mary's not able to capitalize on the scoreboard. And Salina told us, Scott, coming into the night tonight that uh, Brandon Bader had said, you know, hey, one of the keys is, is we, we can't turn the ball over. And they, they've done it twice now. And they, they really haven't. They, they were burned on the Tristan Gardner return down to the 10-yard line. St. Mary's capitalized. But Rough Riders didn't capitalize there. As Adams looks to fire, gets to Faber at the 37, still chugging down to the 40-yard line. 
he's going to be really close to a pantry pride first down. Yeah, really nice throw there by Nick Adams on the run. He he throws a bullet right in there to Faber, and uh, they're, they're, uh, it was enough. They're moving the chains. So that's a well-designed play. You fake the ball to two guys and then get it to Faber out on the flats. It was a pantry pride first down as you get a look at the Wright State University Lake Campus. Yeah, and again, rolling the quarterback out like that towards the receiver, you really shorten that throw. You make it a much more high percentage throw. I like it. Adams will turn and pitch to Jones, is able to slip one tackler, even getting back to the line of scrimmage. There is a win for Xander Jones as he was nearly brought down for a large loss and able to avoid that tackler and get back. Actually gained about half a yard there. We'll see who the rough rider was. That It was Kevin Perry who pressured Jones there in the backfield. And that's one he'll probably not want to watch tomorrow morning with the, with the team. Yeah, Kevin Perry, a six foot, 185 pound junior, 96 tackles, leads the WBL coming into tonight. He definitely sniffed that one out, probably as a result of good coaching, good preparation. Good film watching. Adams looking to sling it to Jones out of the backfield. Gets it there. He'll slip another tackle. Gets out to the midfield stripe. That's going to be a first down. And he did move the chains. It's another pantry pride. First down on second and nine. He got nine. You see Adams double clutch there to make sure Jones had enough time to get that corner turned on the Wright State University late campus instant replay. And he got just enough to move those chains. Yeah, I think he also saw Jamal Kessler, number 14, for St. Mary's right in his line of vision, so he waited for him to clear. Good patience by the quarterback, Nick Adams. First in 10 with 2.05 to go here in this third quarter. Adams will keep it himself on the quarterback keeper. Got a game of about two. Jay Schaefer and Jamal Kessler on the stop for St. Mary's. Yeah, that first series, they threw the ball pretty much every play. Mm -hmm. This this series, they have mixed in a couple runs, but the runs have not been real successful. St. Mary's doing a pretty good job of uh, bottling up those runs, but, uh, you know, sometimes the run is just to set up the pass. Second and eight for the Bulldogs. Two receivers and a wing to the top of your screen as Adams will hand off to Braylon Gavis. Gavis. Nice chunk play here inside the 25-yard line. Or excuse me. That is number five for Salina, Jack Hassan, I believe. Yeah, and give credit here, number 51, Reese Rutledge for Salina. Pulling guard on that play, did a really nice job. A little trap block there. Allowed him to get to the edge, get to the outside. That was incorrect, Landon Ackley on the carry there for the Bulldogs, but it is a pantry pride first down as Ackley gets a chance to get the football in his hands. Well, and another first down. Salina now has 11 first downs. St. Mary's still at nine. Bulldogs send a man in motion. Adams going to keep it himself, reverse his field, and a big play there made by Caleb Felver. He came flying up the field for the Rough Riders to make that tackle. Felver, not the, the world's largest middle linebacker at 5'7", 135 pounds, but you'll see number 23 come streaking into your screen on the Wright State Lake Campus instant replay, and he's able to make that stop for the guys in blue. Well, and that's what we talked about at the top of the game, that secondary. They've got to run support, um, and, and when, when the run play is sniffed out, they've got to close quickly and run support, and they did that there. Under a minute to go here in this third quarter, second and 12. Adams hangs in the pocket. Throws to Gabus. Gabus to the 30 yard line. Gain of eight on the completion. Well, in St. Mary's brought Caleb Felver, number 23 on the outside. You'll see there on a blitz. And Nick Adams smartly gets it away on the other side of the field. Picked up about six yards. Adams now 15 of 22 through the air with 118 yards and a touchdown, as well as that first half interception. Third and four upcoming, and I believe we'll get to that third and four on the other side of this quarter. We've played three quarters of action, and we're tied at 14 in the Battle of Grand Lake between Salina and St. Mary's right here on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. 
Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Salina knocking on the door of the Matt's Heating and Cooling red zone. Third and four here for the Bulldogs. As Adams looks to throw, he's got a man up the seam, and it's caught. Another play there made by Landon Ackley. And Landon Ackley puts the Bulldogs into the Mads Heating and Cooling red zone down at the 15, 16-yard line. You know, clearly Coach Bader has made an adjustment at halftime. He's gone with the passing game almost ex exclusively and not looking for the deep ball, looking for the short ball, little crossing routes inside, uh, just a little short uh, passes, and, and it's working very well. So another pantry pride first down for the Bulldogs. They've got now, they now have 12 compared to St. Mary's nine, which was flip-flopped there at the halftime break. They'll hand off to Xander Jones. He's carrying a tackler inside the 15-yard line down to the 12. A gain of four for Jones on first down. Yeah, Jones does a nice job of, of just getting yards after contact. You see number 23 there, uh, Caleb Felver. 5'7", 135-pound senior, unable to bring him down. Just hanging on there as long as he could, waiting for reinforcements, but Jones able to move him out four yards downfield. Second and six here for the Bulldogs, knocking on the door, looking to take the lead on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Adams pressured immediately, has to get rid of it. A one-handed grab by Jones. What a grab. He'll go down, though. Maybe a, a loss of two there, but a fantastic individual effort there by Xander Jones to just stick his paw out there and for the ball to land right on it. And a great job here by St. Mary's of assignment football. You see they had an outside linebacker who was assigned to him. That's number 14, Jamal Kessler, does a nice job of, of, of making the tackle immediately. So third and 10 with 10.15 to go. Adams in the gun, Jones to his left. St. Mary's blitzes once again, and Adams able to slip out of it. He's got a man at the five into the end zone. Did he get in? No signal yet, no signal yet. Adam Faber, the catch, still no signal. The Bulldogs are celebrating like somebody's signal. I don't think anybody did, but I believe Adam Faber has a 16-yard touchdown grab. Well, they've just placed the ball at the two-yard line, so I'm assuming that's for the conversion. Great job by Nick Adams of escaping. I thought for sure it was a sack. Somehow he gets out of it. Faber is crossing the middle of the field, continues his route. Adams finds him, and a great catch. Just extended his arms out and then crosses the plane with the football, does Adam Faber. Great look at it from our WOSN cameras for the Wright State University Lake Campus instant replay. The extra pointer is up and good. And the Salina Bulldogs have a 21-14 lead over St. Mary's here on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means the best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. Salina putting together a couple of Pantry Pride first downs here in this second half. They've got 13 of them now, and they lead 21-14 over the St. Mary's Rough Riders with just under 10 minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Well, two scores this second half, Salina has been able to put together, and, and I, I think it's a result of, of a great coaching adjustment at halftime. Clearly, they've gone to the passing game, they've gone to the short yardage, short routes, inside crossing game, and it's working like a charm for, for Salina in the second half. So the Bulldogs have the football teed up, ready to kick off. And Zach Gerber will send it away. Caught inside the five-yard line by the Rough Riders. They'll shove their way out to the 25, the 30. Brayden Sullivan to the 36 before he's cut down. Riders have started the average starting field position at the 40-yard line. They're pretty close once again here to start this drive. Yeah, and kind of the old-fashioned wedge there return. You see about five uh, St. Mary's blockers out ahead of the ball carrier. Just shoving ahead, shoving ahead, shoving ahead. And they Braden. get to the 37. Well, and that's why Braden Sullivan averages about 20 yards per kickoff return. Colton Mabry the carry to the 42-yard line. It's a gain of five for Mabry. Well, I wouldn't be surprised to see 
with nine, nine and a half minutes to go in this game, if St. Mary's is able to score, I wouldn't be surprised if they use up most of the clock trying to do that. Steinberg, the handoff up the middle, Hinkle just upended at midfield. Tried to get over that Bulldog defender. He might still be rumbling if he did. Yeah, and if Jack Hassan hadn't uh, caught him there, he was, he was gone. Good job by number five. Just trying to leap over there, couldn't do it. But a great look at that on the Wright, Wright State Lake Campus Instant Replay. So the Pantry Prime first down. Mabry over midfield. Down at the 47, a gain of three there. Carter Allstead there making the tackle, doing a really good job of shedding his block at the line of scrimmage, getting off his block, and then making contact with the ball carrier, you see. Yeah, that is a nice play there by Carter Allstetter. Six foot, 190 pound junior. A lot of juniors and sophomores in this yeah. starting defense. As a matter of fact, uh, there's only one senior, and that's uh, two seniors, Adam Faber and Reese Rutledge. Another carry by Mabry, his ninth of the evening. It's a gain of about four and a half. It's going to bring up third and three. Yeah, that brings Mabry to about 40 yards in the game. Nearly had that football stripped, as you see on the Lake Campus instant replay. Well, third and three. Steinberg under center. Hands off to Hinkle. Hinkle pulling Salina defenders to the 42-yard line. And to get to the 41. Yeah, that's Hinkle's 27th rush for the game. They're going to spot him. Actually, Scott, just shy of that pantry pride first down instead of the first down, it's going to be fourth and extremely short. Yeah, this is fourth and about 12 inches. Hinkle has 27 rushes on the game. Mabry, nine. Braden Sullivan with four. So you can see it's heavily weighted in Hinkle's favor. Might want to focus on him if you're Salina defense. St. Mary's a tight package. Straight T backfield behind Steinberg. Hinkle. Gets the first down. Solana coaches want a false start there for the Rough Riders. Yeah, it was pretty close. The H back say, might have a might have a case. They're just a split second early. Doesn't matter. The chains move. It's a pantry pride first down. I don't know if that's Braden Sullivan just getting out of the gates as quick as anybody we've seen, or maybe got started just a hair early. Nonetheless, it's a first down for the Riders. Hinkle up the gut once again. A carry of four as Aiden Hinkle approaches 30 rushes on the evening. You see Bill Krug there placing the ball. Upcoming play will be the eighth of the drive. Rough Riders trailing by seven. Carter Steinberg under center. Hands off to Colton Mabry. Has a convoy of blockers in front of him to the 25-yard line before he stood up. And that is going to move the chains once again. So St. Mary's gets their 12th Pantry Pride first down. We'll take a look at the Wright State Lake Campus instant replay. Mabry running hard there, and you see trying to break through an arm tackle as Salina holding on for dear life as Adam Faber just hanging on. But it's first and 10 at the 25. Rough Riders to Hinkle up the middle of the field. Hinkle gets inside to Matt's heating and cooling red zone at the 16-yard line. St. Mary's now knocking on the door, trailing by seven with six minutes to go. Yeah, and good, uh, good run support by Braylon Gabus from the secondary of uh, Salina. You see, if he doesn't make this tackle, good chance uh, Hinkle goes all the way. 30 carries for 139 yards and two touchdowns for Aiden Hinkle. Down inside of six minutes. Make it 31 carries. Hinkle inside the 10-yard line. Shoves past the Solana defense. That's another pantry pride first down, and it'll be first and goal for the Rough Riders. Well, if you're into analytics, Braden, er, Aiden Hinkle is averaging 4.8 yards per carry tonight. So, uh, you know, the numbers tell you he you should run at every right. play. You only need nine yards. Hinkle the carry once again. Hinkle inside the five. The Salina D converging on him at the three-yard line. And it'll be second and goal for St. Mary's. And we're down under five and a half, already four minutes on the clock, eaten up on this drive by St. Mary's. Critical and crucial 
fourth down conversion on the fourth and short has kept this drive alive. Second and goal from the three. Aiden Hinkle looking for his third Donovan's Garage touchdown, and he's got it. It's 21-20, Aiden Hinkle's third touchdown carry of the evening on his 33rd carry. And you see the Wright State Lake Campus instant replay, but you only need three yards and you're not touched until you're at the one. It's tough to keep him out. And now Logan Rush will come on for the all-important extra point with exactly five minutes remaining on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Three of a kind, 33 rushes, three touchdowns. Not a bad ratio. Braden Sullivan will hold. Kick is through the uprights and good, and we're tied at 21 here in the fourth quarter of this Western Buckeye Lake matchup between Salina and St. Mary's here on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Minster Bank, supporting the youth in our community. Got a great one tonight here at St. Mary's. Tied at 21 with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Garrett, After. it must be my good luck working with you because, uh, you know, we get <clears throat> we get both the overtime games, uh, both games we work together this year. So great football, no question about it. Jay Schaefer will send it deep. It's corralled at the 14-yard line by the Bulldogs. As Braylon Gabus brings it out past the 35-yard line. He's cut down. And it'll be Sal some of Salinas' best starting field position tonight. Well, now you got to really manage your game here. I think, uh, you know, a turnover, we've had several on both sides of football tonight. The turnover could be, could cost you the game right now. And uh, Salina starts out with great field position here, but they don't use a lot of clock. Right. And, when you're and throwing the, the football, you're either uh, successful or the clock stops. And so you got to be careful about how you manage the last four, four and a half, five minutes of this game. Nick Adams, double pumps. Going deep, going oh. well deep, and it's out of reach of anybody. They tried to go double move on the first play. I find that a bit interesting, Scott, because if you give St. Mary, if you score on that play, you give St. Mary the football back. You might not, you might not get it back. Yeah, no, I like the, I, I like the play call there. I think Adam Faber may have stopped, like he thought uh, maybe Nick Adams was was going to be was sacked gonna, right. or was going to run the football, and may have stopped or slowed down because I felt like Nick looked like he got wide-eyed, like he really saw an open receiver. And, and credit Nick Adams, he has been slippery back there. There's been a couple of times where the Rough Riders probably feel like they should have a couple more sacks than they do because Nick Adams has been able to get out of them. Adams pump fakes once again, reverses field, and as we bring that up, a sack by Caleb Felver just on cue for the Rough Riders. Yeah, probably should have thrown that football away, but he's been so successful tonight at at uh, escaping that St. Mary's rush. He gets away from uh, w the first threat and then uh, is not able to get through the second threat. So third and 17 now nice for job. Salina. Nice job by number 23, Caleb Felber on that sack. So just over four minutes to go between Salina and St. Mary's. Jones in the backfield with Adams. Adams hangs in the pocket, has all day to throw. Fo throws to the far sideline, and it's in nearly intercepted as Caden Sharp came after the ball bounced off the shoulder pad of Adam Faber. He would have been just shy of the first down marker, but the ball popped up in the air. Caden Sharp tried to come hawk it down, couldn't, and it's going to be fourth down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I really like the play. Salina offensive line, great job giving Nick Adams plenty of time. He throws the ball in a good spot. It hits uh, – Hits Faber right in the face mask yeah. and pops up in the air, so you can't say it wasn't a good throw. Just not able to hold on to it. Salina fortunate. Xander Jones to punt. Sharp and Sullivan back deep to return for the Rough Riders. Has really good punt. Jones gets a great punt into the 25-yard line. Sullivan the return. Sullivan into the open field. Sullivan down the near sideline is just <laughs> tripped up. Just tripped up. Well, one of those cases where the you know you you punted the ball so well you almost outkicked the coverage. Sullivan, like I said, averages about 20 yards per punt return, 
has a nice little seam here. Great job, and if he gets through this tackle right there, yep, Jack, he's Jack gone. Pass, and you can see him put his toe almost into the turf to trip him up, but St. Mary's gets the ball to Salina, 49-yard line with 3.40 to go. First and 10, they'll hand off to Mabry. Mabry brought down after a seven-yard gain there on first down. Well, and this is probably going to be uh, the last possession of the game unless there's a turnover or Salina can get a stop here quickly. Three minutes and 20 seconds and, and counting. And it's going to be all run game. Remember, St. Mary's has not thrown the football tonight. You never know. Hinkle. Going to be very close to the pantry pride first down. He's got it. Needed to get to the 39 right at it, and that's exactly where they've spotted him. Yeah, and you see uh, St. Mary's has run the football every play tonight. No passes so far. You never know. It might be a good time to pull out that one pass as, as Salina is really, really getting tight defensively, everybody in the box. Got an injured Bulldog on the field. Tied at 21 with 3.08 to go. And we'll step aside, come back with more fourth quarter action here on WOSN. It's a replay tonight are brought to you by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Dalton Chilcoat, the injured Bulldog, able to leave the field under his own power. It'll be first and ten for the Rough Riders. And I think if you're St. Mary's, this is an ideal scenario. Three minutes left, ball's on the 38-yard line. Aiden Hinkle to carry straight up the middle. Forward progress stopped, a gain of one. I'll give him two. Yeah, he doesn't go backwards. And no. you can see him, <laughs> great job holding on to the football there. Two hands, keeping it close and tight to his body. Corbin Lehman makes the initial stop for Salina. Second and eight. He'll hand off to Braden Sullivan, trying to slip through a couple of tackles, couldn't as Lehman gets another stop for Salina. When well, that ball almost came loose, you see yeah. uh, Sullivan's one arm pulled away off the ball, and then he kind of reaches around to secure it. It got a little loose there. It's one of those times you're laying on the ground still with the football, and you just go, whew, still holding on. Third and five. Big play for Salina right here. They'll hand off to Mabry. Mabry has the edge and blockers. 30, and Mabry down the near sideline, pushed out of bounds by Braylon Gabus. But Colton Mabry very close to the Mats heating and cooling red zone as St. Mary's looking to punch one in with under two minutes to go. Well, they don't throw the football, but that's kind of their version of throwing the football. Get to the outside like that with Mabry. You know, you get Salina all tight in the box. They had all nine guys in the box, one deep safety and they run it to the outside with a little space and pick up the first down. Big play, big play for St. Mary's. Pantry pride first down, gets him inside the Mats heating and cooling red zone. Hinkle, another carry inside the 15. He's shoved backwards. Aiden Hinkle's 36th rush of the evening. And we're under two minutes and counting. See one of the first times tonight Hinkle been driven backwards. Is Jack Hassan. Makes the stick for Salina. Second and seven, 90 seconds to go. I feel like uh, if you want to get a clock stop, just a little play action to handle and maybe throw the football, but St. Mary's probably isn't going to do that. Mabry tries to get to the outside, nearly had the football stripped out of his hands. He goes down to the 10 yard line. Is Hassan in on the stop? I believe Adam Faber was the Bulldog trying to rip that football loose. And now it's going to be third and two, and look for Hinkle to get the football here for sure. Adam Hinkle, or Adam Faber, excuse me, wrenching on that football, and a timeout called by the Salina Bulldogs. So we'll step aside as well. 70 seconds remain in this Western Buckeye League thriller on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Minster Bank, supporting the youth in our community. Third and three. For the Rough Riders. I mentioned earlier the size of the St. Mary's offensive line. They're big, they're powerful, they're good, and you got the WBL leading rusher in the backfield. Look for Hinkle to get this football. And they'll give it to Aiden Hinkle. He has to get three yards, 
I believe he got four and a half. He's down just shy of the five-yard line. So it's first and goal after the Pantry Pride first down for St. Mary's with under a minute to play. Yeah, and credit that left side. Left guard Greg Felver and Caleb Miller at center open up the hole just enough for Hinkle to get through, get that first down. That is his 38th carry of the night. So St. Mary, or Salina, excuse me, calls timeout. And, and it, uh, it's a tough kind of spot to manage here because if you get the football back, you're going to want those timeouts. But also, St. Mary's is content as all get out to let the clock run down as much as it could because you know they, they still have the option to kick a field goal if you're able to stop them. Well, it's first down. You've got six yards you need to score. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking you're probably going to get three straight plays of Aiden Hinkle. Uh, maybe a Colton Mabry to the outside mixed in there, uh, and you keep going to your successful. I don't think at this point you're worried too much about leaving time on the clock for Salina. Um, you want to get the ball into the end zone, get the win. Aiden Hinkle averaging four and a half yards per carry tonight. And when you think that he's averaging four and a half yards per carry with 37 carries, he's got 168 yards and all three of St. Mary's touchdowns here this evening as we're tied at 21 with just over a minute to go. And the ball spotted at the six yard line here for the Rough Riders. They've got a pair of tight ends in the football game. Yeah, and I think you have uh, your two inside linebackers if you're a Salina. Eyes on Hinkle. Follow him to the football and uh, just be careful that uh, inside counter to like Mabry. Unbalanced to the right. Hinkle, the carry. Hassan and Hinkle's in from six yards out. Aiden Hinkle's fourth touchdown run of the night. A Donovan's garage touchdown gives the Rough Riders the lead with under a minute to go. Yeah, and Hinkle appeared to be stopped, and big number 77, Leclerc, gives him a little push into the end zone. That's 370 pounds giving him a little extra turbo boost to get him into the end zone. Great job by St. Mary's offensive line, by Hinkle, and by LeClaire there at the end of that play. And you mentioned that, Scott, that LeClaire 370, the tight end in the wing. They went an unbalanced formation there. The tight ends on the other side of the formation, 270 and 270 pounds. St. Mary's bringing in the beef, and they get the touchdown, 27-21. Logan Rush on for the extra point. What a great way to finish week 10. The snap back, the hold is down, the kick is up. It's through the wickets and good. And it's a seven point advantage for St. Mary's, 28-21. Salina gonna get the football when we come back on WOSN. Touchdown tonight brought to you by Donovan's Garage in St. Mary's. They can handle any size job from oil changes, simple auto repairs, brakes and tires. 419-394-8085 as Aiden Hinkle has all four of the Rough Riders, Donovan's Garage touchdowns. Well, the second half, Salina came out, scored two touchdowns unanswered, and took the lead. And then here in the fourth quarter, St. Mary's back-to-back -back touchdown drives they put together to recapture the lead at 28-21. And, uh, you know, Garrett, you and I talked about it at the break there. Salina has kind of gone away on that last series, kind of went away from what, what, got, what, what they were being successful at in their first two scoring drives of the second half. Braylon gave us the return out to the 30-yard line, so the Bulldogs with one timeout have 53 seconds to work with, trying to put a touchdown on the board to tie this football game up. Yeah, and they've got uh, they've got a timeout, and, and, and we know that Nick Adams can throw the football pretty well. It's just a matter now of, uh, again, bringing back to the beginning. Keys to the game, you know, according to Coach Fry, according to what we talked about at the beginning, is uh, St. Mary's defenders have to keep those receivers in front of them. Nobody can get behind you at this point. Adams looking to throw. Caught by Faber at the 40-yard line, but they is short of the first down stick. They got to move quickly. Clock continuing to tick. Second and three. Adams looking left. Throws, and it's incomplete. Nathan Rammel, the intended target. 32 seconds on the clock. Yeah, and probably a good thing that that one was incomplete. We weren't going to gain a whole lot of yardage from that. We weren't going to get a first down. So um, incomplete, incomplete pass, probably better for Salina to regroup here and try to make a play. Third and three for the Bulldogs. Still have one timeout in that back pocket. And, of course, at this point, it's four down territory no matter where you're at. Gavin Brown lining up in the backfield. 
with Adams. 32 seconds. He'll throw to Brown out of the backfield. Didn't catch it. A big stick there by Caleb Felver as he was hawking down Gavin Brown out of the backfield. And I don't think... Caleb Felver has had an excellent game tonight all over the field. He's had some blitzes where he got a sack. He's had some pressures. Great tackle here. Clean play. Knocks the football loose. Good job by St. Mary's defense. Fourth and three for the Bulldogs, trailing by seven with under 30 seconds to go. Game's on the line. Adams has time. Throws. It's caught. Caught by Faber. Crosses the midfield stripe to the 45. And they'll say, they'll stop, stop the clock momentarily. Salina saying he's out of bounds. You that might be quite the quite the <laughs> the stretch, but the ball's at the 45-yard line. Yeah, Coach Bader's trying to work the officials over there to uh, ask, thinking that he was out of bounds, but I do think he was tackled inbounds, never gets to the out of bounds. He did sure try to reach that football out, and the, the clock remains stopped, so they'll say he was out of bounds with 21 seconds to go, and the ball's at the 45-yard line. Adams joined by Xander Jones in the backfield. Probably three plays left in this game. Oh, we got a false start by the Bulldogs. Now, two seconds ticked off the clock. Well, if it's a dead ball foul, they're going to have to put two back on. Should be 21 seconds on the clock. Now, of course, we're, we're in St. Mary's. Now the official does say, hey, put two seconds back on the clock. So 21 seconds remain. Well, and the clock operator's right in front of us. I they know, got, I was uh, they, they've got a pretty impressive uh, they do. system up here. So first and 15 now. I guess look down a distance doesn't matter. Bulldogs need a touchdown. Adams in the gun. Rolling. Has to reverse field. And now will fire. Looking. Nearly intercepted by Felver. And there he is again. Caleb Felver, one of the seniors on the field, leading by example, making plays all over the field. Tackles, jarring, jarring the uh, football loose, and here almost comes up with a huge interception. And he had to stretch to get it and got his mitts on it, but couldn't corral it. So 15 seconds now with the ball a lot right of, at the midfield stripe. A lot of time spent scrambling around by Nick Adams. Got to be quick with it. Adams will look over the middle of the field, and it's caught by Adam Faber down inside the 25-yard line at the 22. Timeout. Excuse me, it's Landon Ackley, a big catch by Ackley with 10 seconds to go. Bulldogs trying to keep that timeout. Adams will spike with eight. A big play by Landon Ackley down the seam to get them on the doorstep of the Matt's Heating and Cooling Red Zone. Yeah, Nick Faber put that right on the mark. Um, probably two plays here with a timeout. You can still go to the middle of the field. But that's with, you got to go For a reception, quickly. but, but uh, on the catch, you got to go down if you don't think you're going to score and call the timeout immediately. So 24 yards out, seven seconds remain. Adams by his lonesome in the gun. How fitting. How timeout. fitting this, this game comes down to really the last series. So a timeout called by Salina, their final timeout. So they're essentially saying we're, we're either getting out of bounds, we're getting 10 yards, or we're going to run one more play and that's it. Yeah, that changes what they can do for sure. Uh, I thought they should have called a timeout immediately yeah. on that catch. They would have had 10 seconds on the clock. Instead, they ended up uh, losing about three seconds on the, uh, you know, on the quick on the spike. On yeah. the quick spike. So uh, now they're down, they've used the timeout anyway, and they're down to seven seconds, which, which really is potentially you can get two plays in, but the first play has to be a quick hitter, like a, maybe a seven, eight yard route, something like that. But a, a seven, eight, edge. yeah, I was gonna say, you gotta, and I don't, St. Mary's, you gotta play it the right way that you can't give up the inside and let that guy get, get inside of you, but you can't. I guess if you can give up the outside, you do. But there's seven seconds to go, and Nick Adams is in the gun. Three wide receivers to his left, one to his right. St. Mary's still playing 10 yards off the football. 
Jones, flushed from the pocket, lets it fly. He's got a man, and is it intercepted by Braden Sullivan? It is. At the two-yard line, Braden Sullivan has the interception. There's one second remaining. St. Mary's is going to have to take a knee, but the Rough Riders are going to escape with a seven-point victory over their heated rival. Yeah, two receivers in the area when Nick threw it. And I thought they had a chance at it, and out of nowhere, you see Sullivan slide in. And he does get and picks the feet it off. inbounds. He did have a, I believe, Xander Jones outstretched as far as he could, but couldn't corral it. And it lands in the hands of Braden Sullivan, who comes sliding in. You know, what a great game we've had here tonight. You know, um, lead changes, gone back and forth. Salina led first. Then St. Mary's took the lead. Salina recaptured it. St. Mary's then recaptures it in the fourth quarter. And the play gum comes down to a two-yard interception at the two-yard line. What a, what a great game. Braden Sullivan, and I don't know that we mentioned it enough, on the, on the interception, he comes sliding kind of out of nowhere where Xander Jones sticks his mitt up and tries to grab it. It's just a little too tall for him, but Braden Sullivan comes sliding in to make the game-winning interception. So the ball's at the three-yard line. I think St. Mary's calls a timeout hey, just to say, hey, we're, we just got to shove ahead here. I guess the ball's at the two-yard line. The down marker's at the three-yard line. But the yeah, ball was spotted at the two. It's a little uh, precarious situation there because, uh, you know, normally you would you would just uh, kneel down in victory. But uh, at the two-yard line, you got to make sure that you're inside. I mean, even even if you just you don't have anybody catch the snap, you just snap the ball out of the back of the end zone, you win 28-23. The right. clock Go, the time goes off the clock no matter what. So they'll try to make sure Carter Steinberg gets the snap. He does. He'll take a knee. And St. Mary's beats the liner 28-21 in a thriller to cap off the regular season. Both squads go into the playoffs as Salina falls to St. Mary's. Rough Riders win 28-21 in a fantastic high school football game here on WOSN. We're back here at St. Mary's wrapping up a 28-21 victory for the Rough Riders as they take down their heated rival, the Salina Bulldogs, and join now with head coach Bo Fry and running back Aiden Hinkle. Bo, we'll start with you. It was uh, it, it just seemed like every time you guys needed a play, it, it just bounced your way tonight. What can you say about your squad? Well, I guess it kind of didn't earlier on in the year, you know, so it's about time it does. Um, we had 20 seniors in the senior night, and they play extremely hard, and seniors took advantage of their opportunities. And Aiden, speaking of senior night, you get four touchdowns on the senior night. What, what do you guys do for conditioning? You carried the ball 36 times tonight, uh, and you look like you were still as strong as ever in the fourth quarter. Yeah, we do. We do a lot of running, but that's more on the uh, the summer season. But uh, right now, we've been doing. Uh, we haven't been doing too too crazy much, but. So a big a big night for you. You get four touchdowns. How does it feel to cap off you know this regular season with with that outstanding performance? It feels great. I, I've never, I, I don't remember the last time I've had 36 carries in a game. <laughs> it, it seemed to work out for you, Bo. The, the 36 carries you put the workload on Aiden and and he delivered for you. What can you say about your senior running back? Should have been 37. <laughs> I don't know. I, we, I don't count. It's just we go with the hot hand. We go with guys that are getting us yards and moving the chains and and that's who we are. You guys are certainly in the playoffs. Do you feel like you're playing your best football as you, as you reach week 11? Yeah, I think we're playing better on defense, number one. Uh, we're making plays in the secondary, and our guys are really feeling comfortable, and we're playing good on the O-line. So I think we got to just continue to get better, and it's icing on the cake from here on out. Well, congratulations on the win. We'll see you in the playoffs. Hey, I appreciate it. That's Bo Fry. That's Aiden Hinkle. Thanks, guys. We appreciate your time here as uh, we now bring in Scott Nurse to – to wrap up this victory tonight for the St. Mary's Rough Riders. And, and Scott, it's time to name our, our Stolly Hustle Award winner, and I, I think there's only really one option. Yeah, there's no question about it. Aiden Hinkle carried the load for St. Mary's tonight. Great job. He had 38 carries. 38? I kept him too well, short. 38. No, 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 38 carries. Those last two were big. 174 yards, four touchdowns. He averaged almost five yards a carry um, and just did a great job. He deserved it, no question about it. Put the win on his back. So Aiden Hinkle is our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. For more Stolly Hustle Award winners, check out the WOSN YouTube page. Scott, final thoughts here tonight between St. St. Mary's and Salina. A fantastic matchup. Yeah, just a great game. I thought we were in for overtime, and St. Mary's really pulled it together that last drive, punched it in the end zone. Just a great, great game. And then, and then Salina takes it all the way back down, and, and St. Mary's gets an interception at the two-yard line. I mean, just a, a great finish to a great game.
So we've played 10 weeks of the high school football season, and now the, the real fun begins. We start the road to Canton with the state playoffs beginning next week. Both of these squads already clinched a playoff berth. St. Mary's finishes the regular season at 7-3, and th or 8-2, and two, excuse me, and Salina finishes at 6-4. and four. So we'll head to the playoffs next week, and we'll be with you all along the way. For our fantastic WOSN crew and Scott Nurse, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long from St. Mary's here on WOSN.